still ice up here it's like oh, it feels like 25 degrees
and lunch was way too big. And now I've got happen. Uh. <laughs> oh boy. For some reason the bed is a little bit damp. Maybe just condensation, humidity. But I brought my own little bag of sheets, which is best to use anyway for like COVID or whatever. Luckily.
Welcome back to my channel everybody and please say hello to the first hiking video of the year. Very exciting, probably the first of many. It feels so good to be back out again in the mountains and at higher elevations and in nature. You want to come up? You want to come up? Come on. <gasps> good boy. This isn't my dog. This is, uh, this is my friend's dog. I'm just looking after him for a bit. His name is Andy and he's the cutest, most cuddly little dog ever. Oh, Chris just came home. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm recording. Oh no! <laughs> Go get him! Attack! Attack! <laughs> He's a good boy! It's okay! It's just Chris! I know! He's like, wow! Um, anyway, I will tell you more about this hike as well as, you know, how I got here and its difficulty and all of that. Uh, but first, I would like to talk about this video's sponsor, which is Storyblocks. 
Doomlix. Doomlix. I only said it like that because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Storyblocks is a royalty-free, demand-driven library full of all kinds of assets, whatever assets you'll need for any kind of video project. These assets include anything from photos, videos, sound effects, sound effects, <laughs> After Effects templates, animations, whatever it is you think you'll need for your project, Storybox has got you covered. They have a number of different subscription plans to go with any kind of budget, but if you go with their unlimited plan, you'll get access to millions of assets that they've got on their site. They've also been working on an initiative called Restock, which is hoping to diversify the kind of content that you see on the site. So focusing more on LGBTQIA plus members as well as POC. All of this stuff is really high quality and they're a wonderful brand to work with. So if you are looking to get started on any kind of video project and you need some help, go to storyblocks.com slash currentlyhannah and go and check out this sponsor. Thank you so much to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video and for you to supporting my sponsors, which is supporting me and this channel. A lot of support to go around. So, Hakusan, this is the first hike that I've done this year and it was beautiful, really, really, really stunning mountain. It was 2,702 meters high and it took me about five hours to get to the top. I think it was about 1,500 meters in elevation. So it's actually, I read online that it's the same amount of elevation to the top of Hakusan as it is from the fifth base of Mount Fuji to the top of Mount Fuji. So I pretty much, hiked Mount Fuji on this trip and it really really felt like it. Quite a strenuous hike actually, much more strenuous than I was expecting it to be. I had read that it's you know it's a lot of uphill but I really wasn't expecting it to just be all uphill um, and I was definitely feeling it the next day. I was really struggling to walk and my calf muscles only stopped feeling sore like a couple of days ago and honestly I think maybe the reason it was it felt like such a difficult hike um, I think it was because my bag was really heavy. I've got like a new backpack, which is more specifically for carrying like camera gear and that kind of thing. But the bag itself is also a little heavy. I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out like what's the, the best the best system, the most efficient amount of weight that I can carry up and down mountains because this was really quite heavy. I think it's the first time I've ever felt like really, like really, really tired going downhill. Normally going downhill, I'm just like jumping from rock to rock, like light and free, like woohoo, I did it. But this time it was, Oh man, I just wanted it to be over. <laughs> I was really suffering. Mount Haku, I guess Hakusan, basically just means white mountain. Like that's what the, the kanji means. And just cause there's a lot of snow that stays there year round. No, I wasn't expecting there to be that much snow left. And I don't know, if you've ever been hiking in Japan, you'll probably know that Japanese hikers love to be dressed head to toe in all of the latest hiking gear, whatever you can, <laughs> whatever you think you might need on a mountain at any point in time, like Japanese hikers will just have it on like the smallest trail ever. Like everyone's carrying like helmets and crampons and uh, you know, all of this extra gear. Some of it's not necessary, but some of it is necessary. But for, for some reason on this hike, I didn't see anyone with crampons, which was surprising because there was a lot of snow, like surprisingly amount of snow. I was expecting to see more people with crampons, but no one else did. So maybe everyone else was as unaware as I was, but uh, yeah, definitely a little bit sketchy in some parts. There was one point where I was like, hmm, if I fell, if I slipped at this point right now, I could just keep on sliding <laughs> for about 200 meters. Um, but luckily I didn't slip and neither did anyone else that I saw. And uh, the hut, it was beautiful and so big and it had so many facilities. It was just way more than I thought that it would have at that kind of elevation. And it was great. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed everything about it. And of course, also this was the first time I ever got to drive my Jeep on my first little solo adventure. I haven't obviously haven't built out the back of it yet, which is why it was all just a complete mess when I opened it in the video. But so far it's really, really fun to just be free and independent and just be able to drive around anywhere and stop where I want to and take photos wherever I want to. Uh, which includes seeing a giant dinosaur on the way back. That was very fun. I also saw a truck that was completely turned on its side, like blocking the exit of a highway. That was kind of eventful. He was fine though, luckily. And yeah, it was a, just a very, very fun, very eventful first little road trip. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to when it's like fully decked out. Like we, Chris and I have been working, working pretty hard to like build out the back of the Jeep a lot recently. And it's, it's definitely getting there. It's not finished just yet, but it's getting very close and it's very exciting. Oh yeah, when I, <laughs> I got back from the, so like I, I, I parked the Jeep, put the stuff in my bag and everything, locked it, heard the locking sound, and then went on my hike. The next day I come back to the Jeep, 
I unlocked the Jeep and I'm like, yeah, cool, just gonna put my stuff back in. I went around to the driver's seat and I saw that the door was left left ajar, like it was like this, this much open. The whole weekend that I was there, somebody could have come in and stolen, you know, whatever. They could have stolen the Jeep if they wanted to, but nobody did, thankfully. <laughs> Thank you, Japan, for being kind to my newbie mistakes. Uh, <laughs> so lesson learned, check all the doors because the Jeep will still lock even if the doors are not closed. And yes, I was wearing Family Mart socks in this video. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Is that it, Andy? Am I done now? Andy's so soft and cuddly. He's vegan as well. I've never met a fully vegan dog, although he did eat some sausage that we, <laughs> that was unfortunately just like left on the side of the road. He ate the sausage before I could take it from him. So he's not fully vegan. He cheated, he cheated that one day, but it's okay. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to Storyblox for sponsoring this video. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you for watching everybody. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.